Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Oh, I forgot. I was going to call Steve Gibson. I got caught up. And uh, let me see if I can get him on the horn right now. Steve is a, a security guru. He does uh, our podcast, Security Now. And this week on Security Now, he was all happy and gleeful and everything. And I thought, what are you so happy about? He said, well, <laughs> wait till you hear about Fire Sheep. Steve, uh, Steve uh, is uh, the man in charge of GRC.com. That's where you can go for Shields Up and a bunch of great security tools. He's also the author of SpinRight, which has been around for many years. Is really the hard drive maintenance and recovery utility. Good morning, Steve. Hey, Leo. Great to be with you. I'm so glad you're here today because I really want to talk about uh, Fire Sheep. Um, you yes. Were, you were excited, but you were excited for kind of an unusual reason about Fire Sheep. Yes, I was excited because like all security-oriented professionals who watch what's going on on the, on the Internet, I've been, and of course you and I talk about this on our weekly podcast, continually upset by the insecurity of open Wi-Fi, that is wireless hotspots. Like, these, are, these are the sites that you go to, or places you like if you go to Starbucks or... Or, uh, you know, uh, your local hotel where you get online, you don't need a password, you're just online. Right. Your computer, you turn it on and it says, oh, look, here's, you know, you can connect to this location and be on the Internet. I would say most and of us use one of those every day, uh, you know, I mean, you know, as we travel around. It's incredibly convenient. But the problem is, which really people are just not aware of because they don't see it, is that their data, everything that they're doing can be eavesdropped on very easily by a hacker. And so what you trade for the convenience of not having to like log on and know a password or anything is that other people can, can really capture what's going over the airwaves. So the reason I'm excited about fire sheep in a excited in a strange way <laughs> is that Last Sunday, this tool was introduced by some security researchers at a security conference in San Diego. This is essentially hacking for the masses. Anyone can download this. It's free. And as of the moment we're talking about this, not even a week later, 465,000 copies of this have been downloaded. Now, I, I downloaded And By the way, it, it is technically... Well, not even technically, literally illegal to use this. It violates wiretap law, and you could get in trouble for it, especially if you hack people's accounts with it. But I went to a coffee shop where a friend of mine owns it, uh, and I went in there, and I and I, I have Firefox installed on my laptop. I downloaded Fire Sheep, took me a minute, fired it up, and all of a sudden I see my name on Twitter, my name on Facebook, a picture of me on Twitter and Facebook in the sidebar. I see some other people. and um, I literally, all I had to do to log, and so I had a friend who was sitting next to me. I said, okay, Vanessa, she had her laptop there. I said, I want you to log into your Facebook account. She did. Now, I'm not monitoring her traffic at this point. That's not what Fire Sheep does. But she logged into Facebook. Her name and picture then popped up onto my Firefox. Just sort I, of like a buddy list. Like a buddy list. I double-clicked it, and all of a sudden, I'm looking at her Facebook. I'm logged in as her on my computer without yes. her password. Without her permission, yes. I, and I said, now, Vanessa, I just want to show you what I can do. And I put a fa an update saying, I just hacked your computer. <laughs> and now this was with her permission because it is illegal to do this. But I did it as it, and, and I, I did it to show the owner of the coffee shop the risks that she was running by running this open access spot. Right. So college campuses have gone insane since this was released. Well, can you imagine? Anywhere there's an open access point. Yes, and, you know, uh, frat houses and libraries and free oh, open boy. access on college campuses, especially because college kids are going to, they're a little more, you know, prone to, to have fun at each other's expenses. But the, the reason I wanted to talk to, to, to you about this today is sort of to, to spread the word that this kind of thing exists, that it's no longer necessary to be a high-end, super dark hacker person. You could do be this before. This is using uh, something called cross-site uh, cookie uh, capturing. Capturing, and yes. you could do this before, but you had to know. You had to be a skilled, using relatively skilled hacker using Cain and Abel. It wasn't that 
hard, but you yes. but it wasn't that easy either. It has created a fire, what's been called, I've been reading about it ever, ever since we talked about it um, in the middle of a week, a firestorm yeah. because it makes it so easy. I mean, you don't have to know anything about computers to even an idiot see, like me could do it. <laughs> well, I mean, literally 465,000 people now have a copy of this and people are now sight. They're, they're now seeing other people running fire sheep in coffee shops and right. in, you know, where there are uh, open Wi-Fi access points. So who knows what they're doing? As you say, it's illegal to mess with anybody else's communications that technically falls foul of wiretap law, but you know, what's illegal and what's being done are two very different things. Well, and, you know, in a way, this is a bad thing because I, well, I went to my friend's coffee shop and I demonstrated it to her. And by the way, we're going to tell you in a second what you could do about this. Um, I didn't want to go to the next door to the Starbucks because I didn't know how I'd be received. They could very easily have thrown me in jail saying, well, how dare you? <laughs> so, well, and of course, this is the trouble that Google got into when they were g- g- driving around streets, capturing people's wireless that was unencrypted. They, got passwords they, you know, they weren't stuff. doing anything with it, but it really did upset people. So there are there are two ways to fix this. First, if you run an open access spot, and this is what I told my friend who runs a coffee shop, and she did this immediately. I said, go into your router and turn on WPA encryption. She did that. Now, there's a, there's a negative because people now have to have a password. So I said, just rename your access point to uh, the name of, you know, Della, and then in parentheses, password is password. <laughs> so it, it's okay if people know the password. Well, that's a great idea to, to put the name of the password in the, SSID. In, in the name. Yeah. yeah, it's very good, Leo. So yeah. that way she, you know, everybody who logs, everybody who gets on her network sees that and says, oh, okay, I need to enter a password. It's okay to... Because now tell me how this works. WPA isolates you so this fire fire sheep doesn't work. Yes, even though everybody knows the password, the WPA encryption, which is now standard across the whole industry, it's available everywhere on all all it, modern routers anyway. It does encrypt all of the traffic per user of the hotspot. Okay. So no so it completely forecloses fire sheep and any other simple sort of passive sniffing of the traffic like that. And it, as you say it is easy to do, cost nothing, then users one time would have to put the password in which their computer would memor- would remember next time they were back there. And they're protected from then fire sheep won't work. Now, long term there's a better solution and and this is why Google just a, a few months ago said from now on all of your gmail uh transactions will occur over https secure http right in fact facebook has responded to the release of fire sheep by saying we are actively testing good security for facebook and it's going to take us a few months but we will then be immune to this because we will keep our own facebook users secure from their browser to our server and it won't matter what happens in between and that's the change that's the real change that facebook and twitter and myspace and amazon and everybody else who only uses encryption briefly for logon then doesn't bother to encrypt the rest of the time they all have to do it all the time so that's that's what's happening just to get a little bit technical but that's what's happening is that uh, nor you know if you didn't do this cookie thing every time you went to a new page on facebook you'd have to re-log in you'd have to identify yourself each time that's a pain so what facebook does the first time you give it a password it says well here's a token here's a a cookie that's unique to you and and from now on we'll just query you and say do you have that token and for the rest of this session you won't have to log in again the problem is that token is flying through the air can be grabbed by somebody else once they have that token they're you Yes, and that's that's exactly what Fire Sheep did for you when you when when you with her permission clicked on your friend's l- little buddy picture. There was it grabbed her ID, yep. and you were able to impersonate her to Facebook and had full access to her account. People are I've been reading reports of this. The people are posting Twitter messages from people they don't know and hacking each other's Twitter accounts and. Uh, there was there's been a lot of this going on this week. So my I'm excited about this because this will force the change 
from companies like Twitter and Facebook and MySpace and so on. It's just been laziness and inertia that has let them leave things the way they were, never being as secure as they really can be. And this will affect that change. Not coincidentally, yesterday, Facebook released uh, data on how hard it was that for them to put secure HTTP on all Gmail transactions. They said, not only were we able to do this by flipping a switch, it uses very little bandwidth, very little server uh, uh, cycles. It is a it is a virtually free thing to do. They said this was this is not an onerous burden. You we, said Facebook, but you meant I Google. meant Google. Yeah, Google's right. been doing it. I hope Facebook. I hope Twitter, Yelp. I was able to log into people's Yelp accounts. And <laughs> I mean, imagine, you know, if you were a nefarious coffee shop owner, you, as soon as somebody comes in and, and logs into Yelp, you you go in and write a review for yourself under their name, things like that. Yeah, well, these kinds of things will occur to people, and Fire Sheep, unfortunately, will get used for some ill purpose, but that's what's going to create the pressure to get this fixed for the future, which is really what we need. And, and it took this. It wasn't going to happen otherwise. Thank you, Steve, for uh, calling in and, 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 and raising the awareness. If you're uh, interested, we do a great podcast on this subject. Uh, we just did one this week. If you want to know the more technical stuff, it's grc.com slash security now. It's Steve's uh, podcast site, grc.com slash security now. We do that show every uh, Thursday on the Twit Network. Steve Gibson is the man in charge at GRC, the Gibson Research Corporation, grc.com. And go there and get SpinRight, too, which we talk about all the time on this show. It's a great hard drive maintenance utility. Thanks, Steve, for calling in. I appreciate it. Thanks, Leo. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. I'll, we'll talk a little more about this and about a solution for Firefox that might be pretty cool. Coming up. <laughs> 